How are we doing today? We are going to go over the wood joints. You're going to have a series of wood joints that you will have to do. You will be getting this. These are all the joints that you'll have to do. Some are better than other ones, and you'll know that from the reading that you do. So over here, what we have is some, these are in the class that uh, you'll be able to look at. So on here, a uh, butt joint, uh, they are the worst joints. So it's two pieces of wood butting together. So it's either that way, or you can see the reds go together. There is no strength there. Wood is straws. These are the end, ends. So this is your edge and your surface. End grain does not glue very well at all. All right. So there, that's not a good glue surface. So instead of doing that, what I would most likely do is do what is called a rabbit joint. So it's kind of like a butt joint, but look at the added surface that we now have. So instead of just that area right there, we now have all of this. So the surface area that you're gluing increases. So a rabbit joint only has wood on one side, doesn't have wood on the other side. That's stronger. Versus a dado joint, all right, which is similar to a rabbit joint, but there's wood on both sides. So now I'm supported in there. And then we have all right, your tenant. Now that's real strong. Then I can go over here. There's different types of miters. Again, it's kind of end grain. This isn't very strong. Looks good on a picture frame, but check this one out. A lap miter. That now has lots of gluing surface. Same look as the miter, but what we have is a lot more strength to it. Again, another right in here, a, a lap. Here we have another lap joint. So you have your uh, cross, you have an end, and then if you took an end and a middle, okay, and they don't fit because they only fit on certain ones, and then what you would have is a middle lap versus that makes a cross lap. And then here, you won't be doing these, but these are dowels. That's more advanced. So we have a lot of different types of joints. And you're just going to be doing a few of them. All right, so what we're going to do is you're going to get a, a few pieces of wood, right, and what you'll be doing is practicing. Uh, a good joint, if it's done right, we did have it right back here, let me see. So if it's in there, there's no glue on that. It's nice and snug. Oh, too. But it's, it goes together. You don't want to have to force it in there, but it shouldn't be really, really loose. And then we had the one joint that actually, I like this one right here, where if you put that in on that data, you're going to notice that we're pretty much almost at 90 degrees. It's not sloppy where it's dropping down. You'll be using a tape measure and a square, whether it is a regular square or a combination square. All right. Depending on what I'm doing is, I will dictate what square that I want to use. If I am going to be doing a miter right, at 45, I can't use this. This is 90. So I'd be using this to give me my 45s. So we'll start off with a really, really simple uh, joint. All right? You don't have to do the butt joints. Okay? They stink. That's done already. All right? So what you've already done or I've already done for you is this board's ripped to width, squared one end, cut the length. So now I'm ready to go. And if you don't trust me with that wood, cut off the end and you'll know you're square. So what I am going to do is I'm going to start off with a rabbit joint. And what that is is wood that's taken away just on one side. So all I need to do is this is going to sit right in here. So I can just line those up, take my pencil, all right? I always like rule of thumb. You should be able to poke yourself and feel like a needle. 
All right? No jabbing. We don't want accidents in here. But you want a nice sharp pencil. So what I want is I want a nice thin line. I don't want a wide line. No pens, no Sharpies, all right? So now what I'm gonna do is I will either go to the table saw or the radial arm saw. You're gonna find what works best for you. And rule of thumb, depending on what you're making, don't go through more than half. So when you do these, all right, that's all, that's all I'm gonna do. So I am gonna either drop the blade down to that or raise the blade up, depending if I'm doing it on the table saw or the radial arm saw. Um, certain things go quicker. I'm gonna go over to the radial arm saw. So here we have our piece of wood. We're gonna go over and uh, make some cuts. Radial arm saw, you've seen the demo, you've passed the, the, the demo to me, you're ready to use it. Otherwise, you wouldn't be making wood joints. So what I am gonna do is I'm gonna put my wood over here underneath lift up the guard for you so I want the blade at the bottom right there and I want to touch that line so what I am going to do is I'm gonna drop that down a little bit I might get in your way because I like to lean over here and I'm gonna get my head down there you can probably look right through my ears and see the other side there you go so now we're ready to go loosen it go back So now, again, uh, proper dress, I got my eye safety, I got my ear protection in. What I am gonna do is line down, all right? You should know how to use this, on. Remember, I am not coming Farther than that. I'm gonna pull the wood back. If I go back here, the wood might move. I cut in the reverse direction. You should know that. Now I'm gonna take my time. It's always nice to leave the line. Then all I'll do is check it, and that should be smooth. It is, look at that, nice. And there's the line, because remember, I put the board up and drew the line. If I take the line, I've taken too much off. That's a rabbit joint, really, really nice and simple. Let's go lay out another one, and this is gonna be a dado joint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come up a couple inches, and now what I wanna do is I'm gonna, I would measure it, so say if I wanted three inches, I would measure up three inches, make my mark, square my line, and then what I'm gonna do is line that up on it. And then sometimes what some people like to do is they'll go over and they'll make sure that the board is squared. You're perfectly on it, remove that. And now I'm going between those two. That's the dado. Rabbit only has wood on one side, the dado has wood on both. So I'm already set, so I'm going back over to the radial arm saw. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my first cut close to the line and then I'll, I'll adjust it so I'm right by it. Again, nice stance, start off, down. So there's my first mark. I know I, I'm gonna move it over just a little bit. There we go, I'm right by that. You go a little far, that's okay, just come back. Now I'm getting close, I'm gonna nibble until I'm right next to that line. And back. And I'm gonna check it. Oh, okay, I need to take a little bit more. That's fine, I can't put it back on. So what I'm gonna do is come on down. And now I have a nice tight fit, look at that. 
Snug as a bug in a rug. Then I'm going to go back and lay out the next one. Boy, don't I make this look easy? This assignment here should only take you a little bit. Uh-huh. That's if no one else goes over there and changes that. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to do a dado uh, rabbit. So what you have is this one right here. So what I want to do is now I'm going to cut on two different pieces of wood. So I'd let, set it up just like the rabbit. All right. But now what I want to do is I am going to come in. All right. And this is really nice to learn how to do. So for an example, if I wanted to go halfway through there, I use my finger and I'm just going to run it on the edge. Now I know that's not half because I'm pretty good, all right? So if I went there, now I need to just cut that in half. So if I draw this way and turn it around, I should be able to hit that. Ooh, look at that, right on. My eyes are still pretty good, brain's shot. But, so that way, if I come up, I can eye what looks like a half. If I spin it around, it should be right on that, and I can set that blade up to that. Or we can always measure. But these are little tricks to learn how to do. So this is the piece that I'm coming out. I want this to come out. That's going to be my dado. And then what I'm going to have, so the dado is going to be half that, and the rabbit's going to be half that, and the rabbit is going to go inside the dado. So what I am going to do is I'm going to take this out. kind of have my lines. If, you, if this is too thin over here, a lot of times what will happen, it will break off because remember, these are your straws. So now I have a dado. So here's a dado, there's a dado. This is just a little smaller. Now what I'm going to do is the rabbit's going to fit in there. So back over to my work table. And now what I'm going to do is uh, my other piece of wood, that's going to fit right in there. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to line that up. Again, I can take a square, line it up. I can also measure on it. So I am right there. That's fitting in. And again, a sharp pencil. I can take this pretty close and go right there and line it up. Now, this is also nice to be able to do is take your combination square, which I like because it adjusts. I can come over and line that up right on it and lock it in place. And then what I can do is come over here and mark it. And see, I'm pretty close on that too. Look at that. That's pretty good. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm taking that line and we'll do it with this. Okay. And so this is, is fitting in here. This is the piece that I'm taking out. Do you see that? And then how far back am I going here? Now what I'm going to do is take this, and that's how deep in I'm going. Lock it in place. And then I'm coming over, and there, there's my mark. So I'm doing that. And then I'm going to square that down. All right, so this is my depth that I'm going. All right, so I can keep the, the video short so you're not going to sit here and watch for, for hours and hours. I'm going to pull it out again, and I'm going to set up my um, depth for the blade. So I'm coming over here, and you can see here, I got to go down a little bit.
What I always like to do is have a piece of scrap wood. So what I can do is I can come over. And test it. So just like if you're doing on your project, before you go to the real piece, you want to check it. So what I am doing is I'm going in here and I am seeing if that is going to fit in. And I can see there it's just a little tight. So what I need to do is I got to bring it down just a hair. Okay, and now you can see, up, oh, it's a little too far. Right, after I do the test piece and it fit, then I go to my piece. So there what I have is I have a rabbit and I have a dado. So together they are a rabbit dado. And this would be good on a drawer front so when you're pulling it, uh, it doesn't come off versus a dado joint, uh, it would come off. So let's go check the next joint. So we've done our rabbit, we've done a dado, we've done a dado rabbit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a lap joint. So I would come in and, and measure where I want it. So I'm going to give it myself a little bit of room, uh, four inches. I just come off four inches, thereabouts. These are practice, so it doesn't really matter. And then that's where I'm going. So this is going to be a lap joint. All right. The other one right here, this is going to just be, so this is going to be like a really big uh, dado. And then on this end here, I get it flush, smooth, even. We want to learn those terms. There it is here. So what I'm going to have is I'm going to have a, a, a lap joint here and a lap joint there, and they're going to go together. So what it's going to be like a really big rabbit and a really big dado going together. And then, of course, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out and I'm going to set my, my blade, all right? So I'm just coming halfway, no more than halfway. Okay, so now what I have is I have, it's just like a big rabbit and a big dado, and those go together. All right, another one that, that we did is, here is your uh, lap, and here's a lap. Those are the end laps. All right, same thing, setting up basically what they are like are big rabbits. So this piece, that thickness fits right here, this thickness fits over here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go do a miter. We're going to come over and what we're doing here is uh, a miter. So I go over at 45 degrees. All right, now you can go this way or here the blade is, is in on my arm. I like to swing it this way and the blade's away from me. You're going to find out how you like it. I'd rather the blade be going away. It gives me more room. Here I'm going to take the combination square and I'm just going to go right to the corner. All I want to do is just hit that. So now I'm going to come down against the table on the fence, line it up on my line, get my head out of there. That is one of the simplest joints you're going to do, and that's just your basic miter joint. So I can do a miter 
flat or standing up. So here we have this right here. Line it up. Again, that's the piece I want cut off. So the blade's on that side. All right, so I can go that way. Now, but what I'm going to do is we are going to do mitered lap joints. I am going to cheat here. I'll show you a good way. This board is square. That's where I'm taking it to, right to that corner. So I have my height set. So now, uh, what we had, is there was your lap joint, but here, this is a miter lap. So now what we're going to do with, with this one here is we're going to go over and we're going to take that so it fits down in it. We won't be able to use the radial arm saw. We're going to go over to the table saw. So now what I want to do is I, I have this piece cut. What I'm going to do is this is what I want to get rid of. So what I'm going to do is the top of the blade. At the highest peak, what I am doing is getting it so it's just even. And then what I have is I have my miter gauge at 45, and I'm going to start on this corner, and I'm just going to that corner right there. So what I'll do is I start here, pull it back, never start in contact with the wood. Now, if you remember the demo on the table saw, I have my line over there, so I can just move that to my line. Okay, so there we have our mitered rabbit. We have our piece over here. And what we have is a nice, sweet fit on that. Let's go back and set up the next one. Now what we're going to do, we're going to set up over here and do a cross lap. So now what we're going to do is we're going to be standing the board up on edge and go in here. So all we're going to do is take our board. What we want to do is measure over where we want it. Again, doesn't really matter on your joints, but what we do have is that's the thickness of the wood. And then what I want to do is, again, let's see if you can find the middle. So I'm going to flip over, all right, up, off, so now I know it's right about there. Or what I can do is the old-fashioned way is measure it, all right, and divide by two. So let's do this. If we have two and three eighths, what's half of that? One and three sixteenths. If you said that, you're right on. So then what I could do is set this for one and three sixteenths. And then what I can do is mark it. All right, let's go over and set that up. I am going to be taking this miter gauge off and I'm going to go over with another miter gauge. You notice the difference. My fence is a little bit bigger. All right. And that's going to line up so that's, I know exactly where I'm cutting is right there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to raise the blade all the way up. So I'm right on my mark. I'm going to come over. And what I'm doing is I'm lining this up with an inside tooth. Hold it in place, pull back. Now I have my mark on the table, which you've learned before, and I can just go over. I'm turning this one off because my mark was to that side of the blade. 
So what I am going to do is come up and I'm going to line it up with a blade on the other side. So now I have that all cut out. I'm going to come back and I'm going to line the next one up. So this is going to go in there. That, all right, is what's coming out so they can fit right in there. So now what I would do is go set that up and I'm going to do the same process. So what I will have is two of those. Look at that, boy, I'm quick, so there you go. So now, what we've gone over is on, on your lap joints, okay? What we do have, and if we go down here, here we go, a half lap, so they're going on there. All right, we have our end lap. You have your middle lap, and which isn't on there, but I like you to do, and that's a cross lap. And then what we also have, which isn't on here, boy, mean Mr. Gallagher, is your miter lap. So there's all your lap joints. So that is a cross lap, and so is that. So what we have is we, you know, we've done our dado, we've done our dado rabbit, and now what we're going to do is combine. So we have a miter, and now what we're going to do is take that and go into a lap miter. Okay, so basically if we look at this, what we have is you have a rabbit here and what you have is a rabbit here. So all we're going to do is take this off and then take that off and they will go together just like that. So what you have is you have your full rabbit and then what you have is half and then what we're going to do is cut them at 45. So on here this one is easy. So what I can do is I can just come over and take and then just cut that off. So this one's real easy. You just do your um, rabbit and then we go over to the chop saw, lock it in at our 45, and then all I'm doing is I'm coming right down on that corner, and if you do it right, you're not touching that. That blade should have just come right there, so now I've taken the rabbit and I've made it a rabbit miter. Now the other one's a little more tricky. We gotta go do that on the table saw. So now what I am going to do is I am just going to take this off and come up and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this and we know how to do this from the table saw demo and if you don't remember go back to that demo. It's a very good demo. It's me showing you how to use it. So I'm right down here I'm set at 45 and then I don't want to come higher than that. If I do this, I'm going to cut into the wood. So now what I'm going to do is I want to drop the blade down so it's just right to the height of that rabbit. And then, again, I have my mark on here. Or what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over. And now what I do is to a tooth that's going down, I'm just going to touch it. I just want to touch that corner. Bring her back. Don't let her move. OK, 
Okay, now on this one here, if you look on that, I didn't come up high enough, all right? Rule of thumb, I can always take more off. If I came up too high, all right, you know what? I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna show you. Now, I could take that, you can see that, so I should come up just a little bit. Now, if I come up too much, you're gonna notice now what I did is I cut into that. That's a no-no. So I should have just come up a little bit more or a little less. And you just take your time, rule of thumb, measure twice, cut once. So what we want to do is we want to have that clean. So if I was coming over here, now when you go in, I'll notice that. You're going to notice there's a little V right there because I came up too much versus where we have this one that it's a nice, clean, snug joint. So now comes the fun one, and we're going to learn uh, uh, how to use a uh, tenning miter. This one, what is that joint right there? Let me hear you. A dado, very good. Now look at this one. This is new. So what we're going to do is this is, this is also could be for a drawer. That's going to fit right in there. All right, so now what we want to do, you, you know how to do a dado, no problem. But how do you do this? This is the interesting one. So from here, that's going to give me how far in this is going to come, all right? Which should be 3 quarters. So when I go lay this one out, what I am going to do is it's the thickness of your wood. And then what I want to do is square that across. That now is giving me, there's that, lines right up with that. And then what I like to do is I am going to divide this into three equal parts. Wow, how the heck do you do that? Really good trick. What I am going to do, because this is wider and you can really see, I'm going to divide this into four equal parts. So I have one, two, three, four. So those are four equal parts. So I'm going to come over here now and line that up. This is what you want to learn too on when you go do advanced like finger joints or it's a dovetails. So now what I've done is I've broken that into four equal parts. Again, I could take this, I could measure it, divide by four. I could take this and let's just see what it is. So I can take that and let's flip it over so it'll be a little easier for you to read. All right, and that's three-fourths. Ah, if we divide three into three-fourths, what we'd have is a quarter. So what it would be is one quarter, two quarters, three quarters. Or I could go to this method back here, and again, I want three parts. So what I am going to do is I'm starting on one, all right, there's one part, there's another part, so those are my equal. So then I could take my combination square. Again, if I didn't have something easy to divide, so I could take that, bring it down, there's the one, oh, look at that. And then this should be identical over here and bring that down. So there's my one, two, three parts. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to come over and show you a new machine. Okay, so remember, what we did before is, is this joint right here is three-fourths, and we laid that out before. So that's really easy. You just set the height up to the thickness of the wood that you're doing. And then what I am going to do is lock it in here. Now this is a new 
It's like a miter gauge, but what we're able to do is stand the board up and we're cutting the end grain. This is for doing tenons. So it's tenoning jig. And then I have my mart that I'm lined up over. I'm going to bring it up. And what you do is loosen this right here. And then what I can do is I can dial this in. So I'm going to look over. And I'm lining it up to my mark. Lock it in place. Now what I want to do is I'm going to pull back, never start it in contact with the wood. Wait for it to stop. And then I'm going to come over and I'm going to go to my other one. Lock it in. So what I've done is I've put that groove in there. So actually what I could do is that's another joint. It's a, a, a more um, advanced technique where I have a tent that goes in there. So now all I'm going to do is I am going to cut part of this off, and I could do it here, or I could do it on the uh, radial arm saw. So what I have is I have my dado that we've done. This part is going to go all the way over, and this part's going to go in. So what I want to do is I only want it that far. So that distance is going to be the same as that. So I'm going to come back over to my table. I'm going to get that measurement. Okay, which is a, a quarter inch. So then what I am doing is I am now going to come back from there one quarter inch. I could go in here. That was just to give me a reading. So I can come over here and make my mark and right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that off. So this is really, really easy to line up over on the radial arm saw. Because all I need to do is I just need to make sure that I'm cutting the top piece off and I don't want to touch the bottom. So I'm in between. I'm in that groove. Bring it back up. And now I can come over here, line it up. So I'm right next to my line. That's off. Again, rule of thumb, leave the line. I can always take more off. So now, what we have is that will then fit right in. So we've gone over all the different joints that you'll be doing. What you're going to do is print out this sheet. The only one that uh, didn't go over is the tongue and groove one. And that one really we would do mostly with a, a router bit. And um, uh, we'll go over that later on. Uh, all the different woods, if they don't work, all you do is square them off again and try it again. So your pieces of wood might shrink. And you might go, Mr. Gallagher, I need another set of wood. That's OK. All right? Practice, practice, practice. All right? I don't expect that the first time that you do it that the board is going to fit in there and be perfectly like that. You're going to have some that will be a little loose, and that's fine. Measure twice, cut once. Good rule of thumb. I look forward to working with you in class.